Prologue. March 2008. The parade participants scramble up the ramp towards the door, a green-clad flurry of hats and scarves and buggies and children, all rushing to get off the frozen Stockholm street and into the warmth of the pub. Inside the door, pools of water have formed as hundreds of feet are stamped to shake off the snow, making the tiles as slippery as the street outside. The mothers with babies take the seats around the walls as heavy down jackets are stacked up on windowsills and stools and a scrum of men in soccer and rugby shorts starts to form at the bar. St. Patrick's Day is being celebrated by the Swedish-Irish community. Despite the number of Irish bars in the city, we are the guests of a Scottish landlord who marvels at the mass of bodies from his vantage point behind the bar, safely shielded from the scrum. In spite of the biting cold outside, endless pints of stout, ale and lager are lined up along the bar. None lies idle for long. Miriam is collecting money for the Irish stew, and 50 kroner, or about 5 euro, gets you a spoon wrapped in a serviette, which serves as your meal ticket. The younger lads are respectful, but their only thoughts are for beer and crack. Most of them have only crawled out of bed in the past hour, so they either recently had breakfast, or they weren't all that interested in eating after a feed of beer the night before. With them stand some of the older hands, those who have lived in Sweden 10 years or more. The children mill around, their cheeks still rosy from the cold under their painted on tricolours. They add to the noise, dropping their spoons on the floor with a clatter and laughing as they chase one another in the tight spaces around the stools. The stew finally appears, hot steaming bowls passed over the heads of the kids, still running wild. It is wolfed down and the singing starts. With no instruments in sight, Ballad after ballad gets an airing as songs and singers from all over Ireland have their moment in the spotlight. Poems are recited and then Sean arrives. He sings the fields of Athen Rye. No one cares it has been sung twice before. Some of the songs are the bawdy, raucous sing-along favourites. Others are solos, the crowd joining in on the chorus. All receive rapturous applause. Darkness falls. The mothers and children have long since gone home as Carl Stein calls for a taxi and the driver is instructed to take us to O'Connell's pub in Stockholm's old town. We spill out of the car and pour into the pub where Carl is manager, and he starts pouring generous measures of whiskey for Irish and non-Irish guests alike. He turns up the music and we roar along to the Pogues and the Dubliners in U2 as the Swedes look on bemused. For them, it's a regular Sunday night, and they all have work on the Monday. But for us, there is no tomorrow. This is the high point of the year and one of the few occasions where the Irish community gets together to celebrate who we are. On this day we are inseparable as we laugh and we sing and we tell each other that we really should get together and do this more than just once or twice a year. For now there is a sense of belonging in the air and for a few hours we hold onto it as tightly as we can. A short distance away the body of a young man from Wicklow lies in the cold black waters off Stockholm, South Island. Another ten days will pass before it is recovered and he has flown home to Ireland to be buried. <laughs>